Hi everyone, so I'm tackling the pie crust again. <laughs> so in this right here, I have three cup, three and a half cups of flour. Sorry, I'm trying to adjust you and it is not working. Three and a half cups of flour, a teaspoon of salt, and then I took a teaspoon of chives, two tablespoons of chives, or teaspoons of chives, I took some white pepper, like a half of a teaspoon maybe, garlic powder, garlic salt, rosemary, thyme, and a little bit of uh, thyme and, oh what is that, a little bit of celery seed, uh, parsley flakes, and I cannot think of the other one, anyways. I threw all that in there. I'll try to, I'm thinking I can find it right away for you. So I, I muddled it all together in my little muddle thing. Yes, I know how to muddle. And I threw it all in there. Alright, let's pull you up. See what I'm doing? In the refrigerator. I used my Tupperware shredder. And I shredded, I'm going to use this, by the way. I shredded, uh, I'm gonna, before I put that in there. I shredded up um, half a stick of butter and three tablespoons of three tablespoons of uh, sure I'll know what I'm talking about lard. Ugh. So first I'm going to stick that in there. The only, I should have froze my flour, but I didn't. I got some downstairs, but I can't make it down there to get it. So my knee is just not working with me today. So all right, so I got that out of there. I am gonna drop you back down for a second so you can see what I'm doing. See how that's in there? I'm gonna take this flour and kind of just work it around with my hand a little, just to coat it a little better. So that's what I think is going, I'll master this pie crust, you watch. <laughs> I think it's going to make it good. And I wanted something savory, because like I said, a chicken pot pie, you want a savory crust. There we go. That's all nice and worked in there good. Alright. Let me get back for one second. Geez, you didn't have to watch me do that. Sorry. I'm trying not to make this long. It's not working already. Oh, I got my ice water. Oh, that water in there. Connect. My KitchenAid's been hacked up a little, so. Tablespoon, two, three, four, don't start to fall away, five, it smells good guys. More. Let's see. Nope, still too dry. I wish one of you guys that knew how to make cross would give me a recipe that I knew how to do. I'm saying that's good. That's good. That's all right. Oh, Lord. I am so not good with this. All right. So, I used uh, a little bit over half that one. So, I'm just going to put this, make a ball out of it, throw it in 
the refrigerator while I get ready to make the filling. I'll be right back. How you doing, Charlie? All right, almost forgot to bring you back for the ride. <laughs> so let's get the pan on. So I have some onion I'm doing up here, some mushrooms. And you're just going to see what I throw in the pan because I don't want to move you around. And no, I'm not throwing nothing in there right yet. You'll see why. So when I did up the chicken breast, I threw the two big chicken breasts, you know, washed and cleaned. I seasoned them, put them in the slow cooker overnight. Uh, probably about six hours, to be honest. And they came out so nice and juicy because I put it breast side down with the bone part up. Sorry, it's loud. So... Uh, they come out beautiful. So the broth, anyways, I'm using some of this broth I'm going to use for the flavoring of the filling. Don't eat that, Charlie. Aki, Charles. Oh, dog was going to eat some onion. Although they're little weirdos and do eat them, it's not good for them. I don't know why I'm doing it this way. I don't know why I didn't get my chicken, my chicken. <laughs> my Tupperware chopper out because the knife was already dirty. There we go. I'm getting those in there. I'll brown that up. Now I'm going to stick in a little bit of the butter, just so I can get that browned a little. I know we can never have enough butter, but sometimes you can. <laughs> so about four tablespoons. Once that gets cooked down, I'll come back. Alright, so, see how it's starting to butter up and everything looking pretty in there? I did add two spoons like this of the uh, chicken broth. And I'm going to add two more, maybe one more. And that has a lot of yummy flavor. And then I'll uh, freeze that up and I'll have it for another meal. I should try to do it in my ice cube trays. I might just do that. All right. Keep that up. Get that good and boiling. I got my fire on high. Now, I'm going to add some spinach to this right now. Uh, should I? Eh, I might wait. I'm going to wait on that. Because I'm going to make like a roux. So here's some flour. Probably about a fourth of a cup. Right. Now we got to cook that flour down that flour taste, the raw flour taste out of there. Off the side, because nothing yuckier than raw flour taste. off, but then we get that pucky flour taste like I was saying. I don't know if you ever had it. 
But if you have, you'll know what I'm talking about. It just tastes weird. I want to get it off all the sides. Now to me that's not pasty enough, so I'm going to add a little bit of cornstarch to the mix. And I probably will not be putting all that in there, but a good coating of it. Cornstarch is another good thickener. There we go. And you're going to think it's going to be clumpy, but it's not. If I was smart, I would have done this, coated the onion and the mushroom first, because that's usually how I do it. But I wasn't paying attention because I'm so worried about that darn uh, pie crust I made. All right. That's pretty good, right? Add a little bit of water. cold water. Okay, because I'm using frozen vegetables, I'm not going to put in that much more water because there's going to be water on that. So let's give that a boil up for a minute. I'm adding in some veggies. Finish. Good handful of it. A little bit of the organic super sweet cup corn from uh, Trader Supply. Trader Supply. Trader Joe's. about that much. Now I've got Oriental Stir Fry because why? That's all I have on here. Otherwise if you've got mixed vegetables that's usually what you use. But we don't care so I'm not going to use that. I'll put that back in the freezer. Oh, well, husband ain't going to be too fond of it. And I'm going to put the whole bag in there. And then I'm going to let this cook down. I'll season it up with a little bit of salt and pepper. Cook down a little in there, and then I'll come back and show you what we're looking like. Okay, what we do for TV? So I had some diced ham I threw in there. I poured in the rest of the water, and it's nice and thick. See? And it's still got to thicken up and cook down, and it will. I'm going to add a little bit of the milk in right now. Because that will help with the thickener, thickening of it. And if I have to, I'll add some more uh, cornstarch cold slurry in with it. But I want a nice thick. And it's going to bake in the oven too. So I haven't added the chicken yet. I gotta get all this incorporated. See how pretty that's looking? Now I know I can do the filling really good, but homemade pie crust, uh, I know I was, I swear I'll never buy that store bought stuff. So I try, and my poor husband and family put up with it. I'm trying to make homemade pie crust, huh? Okay, that's looking really good, isn't it? And I still got my heat up on high. I'm going to add the chicken, and I want to show you, look how moist that chicken is from yesterday. And, well, it's sat in the fridge, too. And I keep mine in big chunks.
because that's the way husband likes it. Now I gotta stir this in. I'm over it now, oh, that's way too big. But look at how tender it falls right apart. Best way if you know you're gonna be making a chicken pot pie or chicken salad, throw your chicken breast in the slow cooker with a little bit of chicken broth or or just water and season it up and let it cook over, you know, a few hours until it's good and tender, breast side down. So that way there the meat, uh, the bone, the juices go back up to the bone and box back down to the meat. Yum, okay, this is looking really good. And I might not even have to add maybe a little bit more milk. Because that chicken's going to absorb the filling too. This is trial and error, people. Trial and error. <laughs> All right. I'm going to let this cook down. Get my pie crust in the pie uh, pan, and then I'll come back with you. I'll get ready to fill it in. All right, bye. Why do I keep saying why? I brought you back. I got a bigger pan because I didn't like messing around with that uh, little or pan. I've got some of this chicken stuff. I'm going to stick that in there and make sure I got some good chicken flavoring. And then uh, it does look like I am going to be making uh, coleslaw or coleslaw. Corn starts slurry, they call. I'm going to use this cold milk and I'm going to put a couple tablespoons of uh, corn starch in it, and that's called a slurry. And then I'll pour it in there and it'll make everything all nice and thick and bring it together. All right, be back. All right, I got the pie crust in the bottom of the pan. Oh, Lord, is that a job? And I just kind of made it fit. And where it broke up, I just squished it together. Right. You see everything? Without dropping you. About as good as I'm going to get. My filling thickened up really nice and pretty. Wait till you see that. Yummy, yummy. I'm going to scoop that in there. So I can find my scooper. How oh, pretty thick and that thickened up. I did add a little bit more ham base to it because I tried it. And I added a couple splashes of uh, Worcestershire sauce for the saltiness. Oh, that's going to be good. And... It was almost a cup and a half of milk with uh, probably about four tablespoons of uh, cornstarch. Thank you, whoever said that. <laughs> this ain't your store bought kind for sure. Definitely husband and I are not going to eat all this, but as soon as the wind gets out there that mama made a chicken pot pie, I'm pretty sure I'll have a couple kids over this way. Let me get my big spatula. I want to get all that goodness in there. I'm sorry, my wrists are not working well with me today. I don't get in your way. See how nice and thick that turned out? Now I know that that is not going to be a runny filling inside because I par cooked it like this. Believe me, I thought I've done it before. So, and it has been runny inside. Get all the little escape artist. Now, what 
why I put the top on. I gotta roll it out. I'm gonna stick a little bit of this cheese on there. I don't know why I do it. My husband likes it. I think that's why. And it uses up the cheese. <laughs> All right. So I'm gonna get this pie crust rolled out for and put on the top, and then I'll be right back. Lord, it's heavy. I thought I'd bring you back and show you how pretty the crust looks with all the herbs in it. I'm going to roll that out nice so it will sit pretty on there. And then what I'm going to do is because it's 3 o'clock now, I'm going to stick this in the fridge and let it sit until we're ready to cook. That way there it'll firm up a little bit too. Maybe I should, huh? Maybe I should just stick it in the oven. It'd be nice and cool for husband. Maybe I'll do it that way. Alright. Is that big enough to go on that? Let's see. Oh, Lord, that's a heavy one. My timer for 375. Well, there. Lift it up, push it in. Like I said, I'm not a professional baker at all. Squish it down. And I'm going to kind of roll it. Inside there. Try to grab that inside uh, crust. Kind of roll it down. Some spots it's hard because I had to uh, fix it, you know. Like I said, any of you guys got out there know how to make a beautiful pot pie, y'all let me know, will ya? And no cheating with them home uh, crust. You know what? I'm challenging you. That's what I'm going to do. Linda's Pantry, uh, Sutton's Day, Two Family Homestead, All Sorts. Show me what you've got for homemade from scratch pie crust. Pie and crust. Chicken pot pie. Can be beef if you want because some people don't like chicken or turkey, but it has to be a pot pie. So, I'm challenging you guys. Let's get her down. Now, I'm going to uh, brush this with some egg wash and put a couple slices in the pot. And then she's going to go in a 375 oven until it's golden brown. Okay, so I'm back. I got a head of egg, a little bit of olive oil, and a little bit of sugar. And my oven, I'm going to preheat it to uh, 425, cook it for about 20 or so minutes, and then I'll drop it down to 375 until it's golden and cooked all the way through. Even though I know it's cooked, it's got to cook all the way through. You know, because this is a enamel cast iron. By the way, ladies, your pies have got to be done in a cast iron either pan or uh, enamel cast iron like I got. None of that little pie, pie tin thing. Teasers, pleasers, you're in on this too. Come on. 
And then when you're done, you guys can challenge somebody else. But I'm thinking, as crazy as I'm thinking this might look, I'm thinking mine might win. I don't know how we'll get a judge, but I challenge you to make a party one. Like I said, it's got to be in a cast iron. All right. How nice and pretty that's going to be. Set that behind you. As soon as my oven, it's at 388. As soon as it hits 425, I'll put it in. Cook it. When it's done out, I'll uh, get back with you guys. All right, my friends. These are done. Boy, does it look and smell wonderful. I was really nervous on cutting it with a knife because it's porcelain. So, and with the crust, I have to start, like, push the knife towards me. And then carefully... Again, so I will start it here, nice and crunchy, but it is going to be a little gooey because, you know, it is a pretty deep dish. So, and husband's home and ready to eat. So, okay. Kind of broke it apart a little. Oh, look at that. Yum! The bottom of the crust, let's see how that looks. Looks done to me. Oh, yummy. I think my husband's going to like this. Add a little bit more stuff to it. There. And that is what we're having for dinner. Thanks for watching, as always. Um, my shout out friends. Get you up where you can see me. <laughs> um, Mandy, more to life. I'm adding you to the shout out. So I do got you all there. Uh, in the video, I will put below in the about section all the people that I gave a shout out to. They're all wonderful channels. If you get a time, go check them out. They're all wonderful cooks, uh, canners, dehydrators. They, they do it all. So from my pantry to yours, big hugs, everyone. And let's get this challenge rolling. Mine's looking pretty good. Okay, say it. Bye. Big hugs.